In the next part of the modeling for this chair, we're going to take a look at setting up this connecting component between some support struts and the arm that we've already modeled in the first tutorial. There's some really good things about this that we want to cover, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Our starting point is to extract some geometry from components that we already have present. We've modeled the arm and I've modeled this support structure. So let's do this. Let's select both of these, press the question mark key to isolate them into their own environment. And we need to come in and extract geometry. So let's come into the arm, press the tab key, and in face mode, I'm going to select both of these polygons. We've got just two polygons. Press Shift and D, Escape key, and then P to separate these to their own selection. And then let's come back up to the outliner. Uh, let's press tab to leave edit mode altogether. Turn off the original arm component. Now, I'll, I want to take this and move it into its own collection just so that we have everything sort of isolated. Press M key, and then we'll call this connector. Click OK, and then that gets moved in, and then we'll take this, we're going to separate a piece of geometry, which is this. I've just double clicked to highlight this ring, Shift and D, Escape key, and then P to selection. Okay, let's press Tab to leave edit mode. It has separated this to a new object right here. Press the M key, and we're also going to move that over into connector. So we've just got both of those things sort of separated. And then I can come over to uh, this component and just let's turn this off. In fact, we could just turn off the entire chair collection just to make it easy for right now. I'm going to select this object and we want to remove the modifier from it. Let's switch over into wireframe. This object here, which is just the two polygons we extracted from the chair arm, we do want subdivision on it. And right now we're in optimal display and I want to see the actual polygon structure. We want it to have corners at the top, so let's come down to Advanced, and then where it says Boundary, go to Keep Corners, and then let's take this down just to a subdivision level of 1. This is going to be the geometry we want as our starting point, so I'm going to click Apply to bake that in. Okay, so now we've got both of these set up. Let's select the cylindrical component, do Shift-S, Cursor 2 selected so it goes to the center. Select both components and join them into a single unit. Let's look at this from the side. Tab key takes us into edit mode. Now if I rotate, we want to make sure that we are in x-ray mode. That will make it easy to select through objects. But I want to come over into select box mode. And then I can just select half of these. Press X to remove those faces. With the remaining, let's do Command-L, Control-L on the PC to select everything. And then I want to press the period key to return the pivot point to the 3D cursor location, and then press the R key to align that basically, it doesn't have to be absolutely exact, but to basically align it to this geometry here. Let's adjust this geometry to begin matching up to the uh, half moon shape that we have here. Press the K key, come to about the center, and then pull up like that. Press the C key, and click and return. Switch over into edge mode, double click, and then let's come over to the bevel tool. Let's do segments of two, shape of one, and then we can bevel, and we're going to overshoot just a little bit. This will basically be the extent of the object. Okay, and hit return, and I want to remove all of the geometry on the other side. So I'm going to click here in face mode and here and just select anything outside of that central component that we've just modeled. X key, delete that. Okay, we don't have anything else. I was just double checking there. And then we're going to do it again. Come back into edge mode and then bevel. And this one we're going to match up just basically to the shape of the circular form there and then X and delete those. So now what we need to do is, is bridge these together and match them up. 
let's come back and I'm going to turn on the Baker chair. I'm going to turn the whole thing on. We want to look at the arm. There's one thing I've done to the, this, what I'm calling an arm. You could call it a leg, whatever, the support for the chair that I didn't do in the first tutorial, but it is a part of the chair and it's sort of skewed over like that. And so that imparts an angle to this geometry that we've derived from it. So let's turn that back off and return to this shape. Look at this in the front. So we need to match up these angles. So let's come back into edit mode. So press the tab key and let's go into face. Press the K key and click here and then come down to here until it snaps. Press the C key so it goes all the way through and then click and then return. Okay, do it again. K key, click, come down here, C key, and then click and return. And then we'll do it three more times. And there we go. So those are matched up. Now let's, uh, let's remove these. So I'm in select box. So I always like to look there. That means I can just select here, hold the shift key and select these and press the X key to delete those faces. Let's come in now and bridge these together. So let's go into edge mode and select here. And then we can double click to select those, bring up the context menu, do bridge edge loops. We can look at that in the side and then we can make a decision still if we want to alter this. So that's okay. We'll look, we'll look at that here in a second. So select both of those and do shift R to bridge. And then let's again, look at this from the side and I'd like this to be more angled. So we'll come up here and do this. Let's rotate. We're in edge mode, double click and then come over here and we want to slide these. So press G and then G again and just sort of slide it until it gets about like that. Let's do the same thing over here. Double click, G, G, and then slide it until it looks a bit like that. Okay, so there we go. We want to add rounding to this, and this is where we're going to start getting into sort of the non-destructive aspect of this. But the first thing that I want to do is think, you know, maybe I'd like this length and this length to be a little bit longer. So let's zoom out just a little bit. Double click this. In fact, I'm going to switch over to the move tool. I don't like having that widget there. It always makes me feel like I'm supposed to be doing something <laughs> with it. Press the G key once, G key again. That takes us into slide mode, but I want to slide past the boundary and it won't let me. Actually it will. If you hold the alt key, option alt key, you can actually slide beyond the original boundary and then hit return. Do the same thing down here, GG, and then hold the option alt key and pull that down and hit return. And there we go. So that extends it, which is super awesome. Let's come over and add. We'll add two more loops right in there. Let's come into this central portion we've got a pretty crude mesh coming around this way, which is actually exactly what we need. We don't really need a lot more than that. And I'm going to have us reduce the resolution of the mesh coming around this way. So I'm going to remove every other loop and then we'll just do a dissolve edges, making sure that you have dissolve vertices selected, but we need to be careful because the subdivision is going to come inward and then touch the center of the edge. And the original geometry is now going to be intersecting of the support strut that has the circular tube component. So we need to offset these just a little bit. So let's do this. Uh, come into face mode, make sure that I'm in X-ray, and then we'll marquee around those polygons, come down to the shrink fatten function, and we're going to expand these out just a little bit like that beyond what they were. Then we need to come over here. And again, we just need to come over, press the two key, select those edges, G, G, and slide those back up. In fact, let's look at those from the side. So we need to kind of compensate for these G, G, and those need to 
slide back down about like that. Okay. In fact, maybe I'll do this one GG a little bit more. That's perfect. Okay. Now we're ready to start adding modifiers. Let's come in and select in vertex mode these corners. We're going to come down into data object properties, vertex groups, click plus, and we're going to create a vertex group called corners and make sure you assign those. And then in edge mode, I'm just going to select these and these. I could have done that in vertex mode too. Um, come down here, press plus, and this is going to be called bevel one and make sure you assign those. Okay. Now, another thing that we want to do is this is a good practice to get into. Just checking because we've merged two different topologies. We want to make sure that we have correct facing directions. Switch over here into shaded view and then let's turn on face orientation. And so we have mismatch. Press A key, come up to mesh normals, do recalculate outside. Well, it's decided that outside was what we would want to be inside and vice versa. So we'll just back to mesh and then flip those. So that's good. That is corrected face orientation. And then I also like to come down and just make sure under geometry that we don't have any custom normal information. It turns out we do. It's picked up some custom normals from someplace. So click to remove and you can see how that is corrected it. So all the vertices, all the normals are being calculated on the fly based on the geometry now. At this point, before we add the modifiers, we need to have a really good sense of the size of the object. Press the tab key to leave edit mode. Let's just look at the dimensions. So I'm working in inches. I'm sorry if you're used to metric, but we're working in the less than one inch to about two, two and a half inch range, just so you have a general sense for the scale of the object. So let's come over now to the modifier group and let's add a bevel modifier. And in this case, I'm going to turn it off because when it operates on all of the geometry at once, that's kind of annoying. We're going to take the method, the limit method, down to a vertex group. And we specifically, in this case, want to work in edges. And we're going to select uh, the bevel. And let's, let's take this down to, I don't know, let's 0.1. Let's give it a value of 3. And let's turn it on. And we can see it operating there. In fact, let's come over here into a wireframe mode so we can see that. And this is where you could play with the size, for instance, if we wanted this to be a little bit different and the resolution could maybe go up a little bit. But for now, this is a good starting point. Since it's non-destructive, we can make changes down the road. Then we want to come into the corners and we want to add another modifier for those. So let's come back over here and do a double modifier. Let's turn it off again, but in this case, we want to go to vertex mode. Let's set it to 0 0.04. I'm just sort of guessing based on the size of the object. Let's come down to a vertex group again, and we will go to corners and let's turn it on. And uh, let's see here. Let's do let's do three for the vertex count, and let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. So now we're ready to, to add the next modifier, which is a subdivision modifier. Let's come over, add a subdivision modifier. Let's look at this in shaded mode. And I think we kind of, we, we need to figure out again what the resolution is that we want to be looking at. So in fact, I'm going to take this up to a value of two and let's go into wireframe. I kind of like to look at it. I like to look at the actual polygons. It really gives me a sense for what's happening with the geometry. Okay, so now we'll come in and add the next modifier, which is solidify. And this one, again, it's too distracting to me to have all of that going on, but we want to flip it. It's minus, but we want a positive value. So go one and let's just try 0 0.05 as a starting point. Let's turn that back on. Let's do Option Z to turn off X-ray mode, and then we can get a sense for the thickness. And this is where we could come in and maybe do 0 0.06, something about like that. I think that works pretty well. 
Now, the next thing that we need to do is I want a little bit of a bevel around these 90 degree angles, so it's not quite so sharp. I want to come over and expand this out so we can see the names. When you could start getting a stack of modifiers, it can be really useful to name them. So we'll call this bevel dot one, and the next will be bevel dot corners, and then subdivision and solidify are, are pretty self-evident. But the next one is then we're gonna add one more modifier, and let's call this bevel dot small corners, something, something descriptive. And again, let's, let's just turn this off so it's not getting in the way. These values that they put in are enormous by default. So let's do point zero zero two, very small value. Let's give it a value of say four. And in this case, we're going to use the default angle. We just want it to detect this angle. Well, 90 degrees is larger than 30 degrees, so it's going to catch it. But 30 degrees could still potentially catch other things that we don't want. So I'm going to take that up a little bit higher. Let's turn this on. And there we can see that it's given us something that's probably a little bit too small. So let's come in to 0 0.001. Maybe that's just a little bit too large. Let's do 0 0.008. And I think that works pretty well. Okay, now let's go back into shading mode because we want it to make sure if you look very carefully, you can see a bit of shading blending here. And that's because it's blending the normals from these polygons over into the angle here. And we want to come down into shading and specifically turn on hard normals. And you can see how that really cleans that up. I've done a whole video on what hard normals is that you can go watch. But that's, that's a very useful thing in this particular case. Okay, so there we go. We've gotten that finished. And now let's leave edit mode and let's turn back on the chair so we can see that in place. And the final thing that we're going to do is we've got, I've got a bolt already modeled here that it would be nice to put these in place. Let's take this collection and move it into the Baker chair support. That's really where it belongs. And I'm going to call this connector itself. So it's specific. And uh, let's move, let's come over and do a set origin to geometry. So it's kind of in a logical location. So uh, let's do this now. Let's take this bolt object, press the period key and return the pivot to the active item. So it makes logical sense. And I want to put this here and I'm going to put a duplicate there. Let's come down and use an asset for that. So asset browser. Let's come over and look at just the current file. We've got the bolt here. So let's turn that into an asset. So mark as asset. And there that shows up. Now I can take, just drag this and pop it right there and it'll just place it right on that surface. And here, for the original, let's place the cursor right here. But with the cursor, we want to come over to Tool, and we want its orientation to be oriented to the geometry itself. So go ahead and click again, and it's now oriented it to the normal of the click point on the surface. Then we can take the original, do Shift-S, selection to the cursor's position, and then under Object, do Transform, Align to Transform Orientation. But we want the, the orientation to be derived from the, from the cursor. And there we have that aligned. OK, so there you go. That is how you can go ahead and model something like that connector for the chair's support strut.